Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everybody, this is uh, Dr. Ravindra Maradi, Associate Professor in the Department of Biochemistry, Kasturba Medical College, Manipal. Uh, in the today's class, I will be discussing about sources of ammonia. The topics which I am going to discuss are under the following headings. First, we will see what is ammonia, then when does it produce, how ammonia is produced and where it is produced. Ammonia is produced in different tissues. We will see in different tissues how it is produced. First thing is what is ammonia? <coughs> ammonia is a compound produced during the protein metabo metabolism. As such, when the proteins are digested in the intestine, they are absorbed in the form of amino acids similar to the glucose. It is a secondary active transport. Once the amino acids are entered into the blood, they undergo deamination. Okay? And once that uh, amino groups are taken out from the amino acids, you get free ammonia and keto acids. That is how the ammonia is produced. We will see and uh, this ammonia is uh, the normal range is very, very less. The normal level is around 5 to 35 micromoles per liter in the blood. You have to maintain the ammonia level in this narrow range only. If the ammonia level increases in the blood, it, it condition is called hyperammonemia. This increased ammonia is toxic to the brain. We have to maintain this level so that uh, the the body will not suffer from any disorder associated with the uh, increased ammonia level. So, what are the causes for this hyperammonemia? Once the ammonia is produced during the amino acid catabolism, this ammonia is has to be detoxified and should be excreted out of the body. So, the major cause for increased ammonia level are one is this ammonia major part is excreted in the form of urea. So, any defect in the enzymes producing the urea that is in the urea cycle that causes increase in blood ammonia level or any liver pathology, any liver disease this causes the hyperammonemia. So, what are the effects? Ammonia actually it increases the blood pH and it causes blood brain barrier and it can cause cerebral edema, tremors, coma and death. That is why we need to take care of this ammonia level we have to maintain within that normal narrow range. Next when does it produce? Ammonia, whenever uh, we take a dietary protein, it has to be, it is digested and then absorbed in the form of amino acids. Once it comes to the liver, the amino group is removed from this amino acids and that is uh, one source of ammonia. And this ammonia uh, can also be produced during the catabolism of proteins. For example, in case of uh, starvation or prolonged fasting condition, body utilizes the proteins, body proteins, they are catabolized into amino acids and the free amino group is removed and the remaining carbon skeleton used as source of ammonia. That is the other source. So, in these two conditions, either we are in well-fed condition or fasting condition, we will be getting this ammonia. Uh, now, we will see how ammonia is produced from different amino acids. 
almost all the amino acids the first thing body does is during catabolism it removes that free amino group which is protecting the amino acid from oxidation. So, that free amino group is released in the form of ammonia and left out skeleton is called alpha keto acids that carbon skeleton and that is used as a fuel to release uh, to get the energy and also precursors of some of the other compounds like niacin. The free ammonia that is released is highly toxic to the body. It has to be excreted out from the body. And uh, why this ammonia is toxic? Because the ammonia it increases the body pH and it can cross blood brain barrier to cause cerebral edema, tremors, coma and death. So, the body what it does is it takes that free ammonia and it converts that into urea in the liver and majority of that around 86 to 90 percent is converted into urea and excreted out of the body and some minor portion is also excreted in the form of ammonium ion in the kidney which helps in the acid base balancing. You might be thinking that why this uh, uh, if you add up this uh, 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 ammonia that is excreted in urea and ammonium form, it does not come up to 100 percent. The remaining amount, small amount is also excreted in some other nitrogen containing compounds like creatine and uric acid. If you see the structure of this urea, it has got two amino groups. Uh, two amide groups NH2, NH2 and a carbo carbonyl group. So, this amide group when this urea is dumped into the blood, it does not change the body pH and it is non-toxic and it is easily it can cross the plasma membranes and it does not require any protein to carry in the blood and it is a very uh, beautiful compound and that is produced is excreted out of the body in through the urine. Now, we will see in most of the tissues how this amino uh, uh, ammonia is produced uh, in most of the tissues including skeletal muscles whenever this amino acids the first thing body does is removes that amino group in the form of ammonia. Okay. When you remove the um, uh, amino group those re reactions are called deaminations. Deamination reaction means D means removal of amino group is deamination. Most of the tissues the free uh, amino, uh, amide group is removed in the form of ammonia and that is taken uh, by the uh, glutamate to convert into glutamine. The glutamate can take up uh, uh, one amino group and alpha ketoglutarate can also can take up one amino group and uh, ammonia and convert into glutamate and glutamate converts into glutamine by the glutamine synthetase. It is the ATP requiring reaction and this glutamine is dumped into the blood and this is taken up by either intestine or kidney and then uh, further catabolism takes place. So, glutamine is a very important compound because it does not change the body pH because that ammonia is present in the amide group, the uh, nitrogen is present in amide form that is why it does not change the body pH. So, in kidney what happens? The glutamine that is uh, present will be that is coming from most of the tissues as I told that ammonia is carried in the form of glutamine because the ammonia once it is dumped into the blood it increases the body pH that is why the transport form is glutamine. So, glutamine it is having an amide groups and it does not change the body pH that is why this is the transport form. Once in the kidney it is seen by an enzyme glutaminase and this glutaminase enzyme removes that ammonia and forms glutamate and ammonia. This ammonia 
combines with a, a proton to form ammonium ion and excreted in the urine and it plays a very important role in acid base balancing as it helps in excreting a proton. In case of intestine what happens the glutamate that is coming from most of the tissues or from the dietary protein two sources the glutamine again is seen by glutaminase enzyme and removes takes out that amide group of glutamine and converts into ammonia and glutamate and this ammonia is then uh, taken up by the liver through the fortal blood and this ammonia is also produced by the action of intestinal bacteria. In the bacteria the ammonia is produced is also a source and that also along with the ammonia of glutamine it goes to the liver this is the other source. And the urea that is excreted that is present in the blood a part of urea can be taken up by the intestine and it sees an enzyme urease and produces converts that urea into carbon dioxide and ammonia. So, this is the other source of ammonia from urea and what happens in the muscle? Muscle there are group of enzymes we have we call that as amino transferases. These amino transferases they transfer as the name suggests they transfer a amino group from the amino acids and that is converted into that amino acid is converted into alpha keto acid. That amino group from amino acid is taken up by the alpha ketoglutarate and forms glutamate and this reaction is catalyzed by PLP that is pyridoxal phosphate vitamin B6. This glutamate again sees one more amino transferase that is alanine amino transferase. This is also PLP dependent reaction and the amino group from glutamate is given to the pyruvate and pyruvate is converted into alanine and glutamate is converted into alpha ketoglutarate and this alanine goes to the liver. Again the amino group from amino acids in the muscle is not directly dumped into the blood that is coming through alanine. The reason is here alanine again it is it does not change the body pH. That is why body knows its biochemistry it sends the amino groups uh, ammonia in the form of glutamine or from the alanine that goes to the liver. So, once they come to the liver here we have the alanine and that is again uh, acted upon by the alanine transferase here it is a PLP dependent enzyme. So, alanine gives that amino group and it is converted into pyruvate the amino group is taken by alpha ketoglutarate and converted into glutamate and here the glutamate is uh, seen by glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme and that uh, gives the ammonia free ammonia and that enters into the urea cycle that is the first source of ammonia. Then that glutamate can also be acted upon by one more transaminase that is the aspartate transaminase and here this glutamate uh, gives that amino group to alpha uh, oxaloacetic acid OAA to convert into aspartate and glutamate converts into alpha keto glutarate and aspartate is the source of second nitrogen of the uh, uh, urea. So, then uh, when you see that urea structure it has got two amino groups the chemical structure is NH2 C double bond O NH2. So, so, two nitrogens are donated by one from this free ammonia from glutamate and another the nitrogen is from aspartate and CO comes from carbon dioxide. So, in the liver that is uh, urea is synthesized and excreted into the urine. 
so the major sources of uh, ammonia from different tissues we saw but there are also some minor ammonias they are produced small amount of ammonia from purine and pyrimidine catabolism in purine catabolism we can get this free ammonia from adenosine monophosphate uh, uh, is acted upon by adenosine monophosphate deaminase and it is converted into inosine monophosphate during this process the ammonia is released and then we also get uh, free ammonia from adenosine acted upon by adenosine deaminase enzyme and it is converted into inosine as the name indicates deaminase the removal of a amino group from adenosine to inosine and also guanine acted upon by guanage which releases ammonia and guanine converts into xanthine and also pyrimidine ring when it break down the pyrimidine ring it gives out the ammonia and pyrimidine is converted into beta alanine and beta amino iso butyrate with the release of the ammonia and also small amount they are produced from the amines from the diet and also monoamines like epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine they undergo catabolism by the monoamine oxidase enzymes giving out the ammonia. So, we discussed about the different sources of ammonia we started with what is ammonia ammonia is a byproduct that is produced during the protein catabolism and um, uh, after amino acid catabolism and when does it produce it produces ammonia during well fed or in the fasting condition also whenever the dietary proteins they undergo digestion amino acids absorbed and when they come to the liver the first thing body does is removes that amino group in the form of ammonia and uh, how it is ammonia produced by different tissues we saw that uh, it produces by the deamination and uh, then uh, transamination reactions and uh, the uh, in the liver it is uh, uh, glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme different enzymes in different tissues even in the intestine kidney by uh, glutaminase enzymes in different uh, 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 sources of this uh, ammonia is produced by different uh, substrates and then uh, uh, where does it produce I told in different tissues and uh, this ammonia is very toxic and uh, it should be excreted in the from the body and major junk of this is excreted in the form of urea around 86 to 90 percent and excreted in the urine and uh, around 3 percent as ammonium ion. So, that uh, is the summarizes what are the uh, different sources of ammonia. I hope this uh, uh, lecture helped you to understand the different sources of ammonia. Thank you.